So in a previous video, we hooked up this EEPROM, and we were able to hook some switches up here to our address lines. And by setting these, these address lines, we can get different data out of the data lines. We could program it by setting the address that we wanted to program, and then setting, you know, hooking these jumpers up to, to put whatever data we wanted into the chip, and then pushing this button here to write that data. And that was fine for writing a few bytes, uh, programming a few bytes on, into the EEPROM. But if we want to program more than just a few bytes, that's going to get really old. So in this video, I want to look at a much faster way of programming this chip with, with a lot more data. And to do that, we need to find some way of automatically setting all of these address lines and data lines and the write enable and the output enable, all the, uh, the control lines, all of these different uh, inputs here to this chip. We need to find some way of automatically setting them to the right values and, and kind of sequencing through all of those values to program the chip. And so what I'm going to do is look at using an Arduino for that. Because the Arduino lets us hook it up you know, from a USB to our computer, and then it gives us a bunch of digital outputs that we can program. Now, I could certainly use this Arduino Uno, um, no problems there, but I'm going to use instead the Arduino Nano, which has exactly the same functionality. It has all the same outputs. Uh, it's just in a more compact uh, form factor here, uh, which is really nice because it, it, it'll plug right into our breadboard. We can plug the Nano directly into the breadboard here. And then it has a USB port uh, that we can use to plug it into the computer. And once we plug it into the computer, it also powers the board, which is very nice. And the other nice thing is that that power is, is also available here. There's five volts and ground. So we can hook that up to the breadboard and we can actually use the uh, USB, the same USB that's, that's connected to the Arduino to also provide power to the rest of our breadboard. So now we've got the Arduino plugged in. I'll go ahead and make sure everything's working just by loading up one of the basic examples here uh, the, the blink example. And this basically just flashes the LED that's on the board. So I'm going to make sure under tools I've got the Arduino Nano selected as my board, and I've got the right port selected there, and go ahead and compile and upload. And it looks like everything's working fine. Our LED is, is now blinking on the board. So how is this going to work? Well, if we look at the data sheet for the 28C16, the EEPROM that we were looking at in the last video, you can see we've got uh, our address pins. We've got address 0 through 10. So there's 11 address pins. And then, of course, 8 data pins, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 8 data pins. And then we also need our output enable. We need to be able to set that. And then we need to pulse our write enable pin from high to low. So that's a bunch of pins that we need to control. And if we look at the Arduino, you see we've got, in terms of the digital pins that we can control, there's basically uh, 14 pins. So there's uh, 0 and 1 here, which are also marked as RX and TX. And then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then uh, D13 is over here. So those are the digital pins that we can control from the Arduino. So that's, that gives us 14 pins. So how do we use those 14 pins that we've got to control, you know, essentially the 11 address pins plus the 8 I.O. pins, so that's uh, 19 pins, plus the write enable and output enable pins, that's 21 pins. So we need to be able to control 21 inputs, essentially, to the EEPROM using just 14 data signals on the Arduino. So that sounds like a, a bit of a problem. But, but actually, it's worse than that, because uh, this, these first two pins, TX and RX, uh, you can only use those if you're not using the serial interface with the USB. And as you'll see, we really want to use that serial interface, because if we want to read what's on the EEPROM, it'd be nice to be able to read the data from the EEPROM and then send it to the computer so we can display it on our screen or something so it's easy to read. And to do that, we need to use the serial interface uh, through this USB, and, and that takes up these first two pins. So instead of 14, that leaves us with, with only 12 data pins to work with. And so you could say, well, we definitely need to be able to control the eight data pins, because that's uh, you know, what's, you know, where, where, where we have to write all eight at, at the same time. When we hit this, this write signal, all eight of these bits are, are getting written to the chip at the same time. So you know, we, we definitely need eight uh, data signals. Uh, but, but we've only got 12 here, so if we use 8 of them for, for our data signal going into the, into the chip, then that only leaves us with 4 additional lines. But fortunately, there is a solution here. There is a way 
to use only a couple pins on the Arduino to control a, a whole bunch of signals. And the way to do that is with something called a shift register. So as the name would imply, a shift register is, is a kind of register, and registers store data. And so we can uh, basically build one using D flip-flops. And so this is a 74LS74, which has two D flip-flops on it. And I've got, got it hooked up here so that uh, this button here controls the input to the, uh, to the D flip-flop. And then I've got uh, a clock hooked up to it as well. And so just as a reminder of how this works, if the clock pulses, then it latches whatever is on the input. And so if I'm not pushing this button and the clock pulses, then it stores a zero. If I am pushing the button here and the clock pulses, it stores a one. And then if the clock pulses again and I'm not inputting anything here, it stores a zero. But what we do with the shift register is we take the output of that D flip-flop and we hook it into the input of another D flip-flop. And so what happens now is if I clock a one into this D flip-flop, that one is now serving as the input for the next D flip-flop. And you'll notice I've also connected all the clocks of these D flip-flops together. And so on the next clock pulse, this one here is the input for the next D flip-flop. And so you see on that clock pulse, that one comes over here. And I can hook that to another D flip-flop. And on the next clock pulse, it moves over there. And I can have that hooked up to another D flip-flop. And, you know, I can put a one in over here on the first one. And you see that one goes here, but also this one moves to the next D flip-flop. And we can extend this for as many stages as we want. And so from this stage, it can go here and here and here and here. So I've got eight stages essentially hooked up here, but you could have, you know, arbitrarily many stages, as many stages as you want hooked up here. And every clock, everything just moves down one stage. And so you can put whatever data you want into this thing by just controlling the one input here and the clock. So I can put whatever value I want in here. So if I want to put 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 in, into this shift register, I just need to clock in those, those bits. So I can clock in a 1 and then a 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And now my outputs collectively show that 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And I was able to get that data into these eight outputs just using, a, well, really two inputs, the, one in, the single input and then the clock. And so because a shift register has just a single input, but as many outputs as you want, it's very useful in a case where, you know, like an Arduino, where we have a, a limited number of, of output pins and we, and we need more. And so that's why shift registers are actually very common in Arduino projects. And one of the most common shift registers that's used is the 74HC595. And it's an 8-bit uh, shift register, serial input. And this is kind of the, the block diagram here. And so it has this 8-stage shift register, which is what we, what we just built here. And so it has a, I think DS is the data serial input. And then it has the shift clock pulse. And so that's our, you know, basically our data in and our, and our clock pulse. And then this MR is a master reset, so that just resets the whole thing. Uh, but really, it's just these two inputs that control all eight of those bits. So I've got a 74HC595 here, and I've hooked a few things up. I've got you know power and ground hooked up to it here. And then the outputs, there's eight outputs. Those are hooked up to these LEDs, and so that, that's these eight uh, blue wires that come over to these LEDs and then through the LEDs to ground. And the 74HC595 uh, doesn't uh, have any kind of current limiting on the output, so we need to make sure we have current limiting resistors there so we don't uh, push too much current through our LEDs. I've also got pin 10 here tied to 5 volts, and that's that master reset. So just by tying that to 5 volts, that's not, it's going to not reset. Uh, and then Pin 13 here is an output enable, and so uh, I've tied that to ground as an active low, so that just enables our outputs. So then beyond that, we've got these two inputs. We've got our, our data our input here is the green wire, and then we've got our clock. And so this should work very similarly to the shift register that, that we already built. In fact, we can hook it up to the same input. So I'm going to hook the clock to the same clock as, as uh, the shift register that, that we built before, and I'm going to hook the input the data, serial data input into that same button there. And I'll hook up uh, power as well. 
And so now whatever we clock in here should also get clocked in here because this chip should behave the same way as this eight stage shift register here. So let me clock a few bits in here. And you can see we've got one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. And that's the same thing that we've got down here. One, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. So great, using just two pins, and these could be two pins coming from our Arduino, we can control eight or even more. We could, we could cascade these. Like we could have the output, the, the last output of this go into the input of another one of these, uh, 74HC595 and get 16 uh, additional, uh, or 16 additional uh, uh, outputs here. So this is perfect. But there is one other part of the 74HC595 that is important to, to understand, and that is that there is this 8-bit storage register. And so there's this pin 12, which is the storage register clock pulse. And what that does is it sort of serves as a, as a register between the shift register and the output. So what, we, what we've been seeing is that with each clock pulse, the data shifts in, and we see it, you know, we see it shift. As the clock pulses come, when the data shifts along like that. But pin 12, what pin 12 lets us do is if we tie pin 12 low like that, then we can shift data in here and it will just stay in the shift register. It won't actually go to the output until we tell it to. And that can be very nice because we can put some data in here. So there's some, some data, and you see that that data is, you know, that, that data is getting shifted into the, H, the 74HC595, even though we don't see it on the output. It's in here. All we need to do is then take this pin 12, this uh, storage clock pulse, if we take that high, you see now the, the data shows up on the output. And that can be very handy because if you want to change all eight of these pins, you don't necessarily want to shift it around because who knows what that's going to do to whatever this is hooked to. You want to be able to set whatever you want on all eight of them simultaneously. So let's say we want to turn all of these off. We could just shift in all zeros, and then once all zeros are shifted in, then we just flip that and it shuts them all off. If we want to turn them all on, we can shift all ones in. Once all the ones are shifted in, we can turn them all on. And so really, to use this properly, we want to use all three of these signals, but that still gives us an awful lot because we can use three signals to control eight or 16 or 24, 32, however many uh, outputs we want to control. So the 74HC595 is definitely going to help us overcome this problem of not having enough pins on the Arduino. Okay, so we determined that we're going to need two of these 74HC595s, so let's add two of them to our board here. And we'll hook up power and ground to both of these. We can also tie ten, uh, pin 10, which is that master reset. We can just tie that high because we're not going to be using that. And then we can also tie pin 13, which is the output enable. Uh, we can tie that low because we always want the output to be enabled. Now coming from our Arduino, we're going to have our serial data, our shift register clock, and our storage register clock. So those three pins, 14, 11, and 12. And so pin 14 is our serial data, and that's going to be uh, D2 on our Arduino. So D2 is going to go to pin 14. Then D3 is going to go to pin 11, which is the shift register clock pulse. And then D3 on the Arduino is going to go over here to pin 12, which is the storage register clock pulse. So with these three signals, we can push data into the shift register and control the eight outputs, which are these pins over on this side, and I think one over here. Now to hook up the second shift register, conveniently they give us uh, a tap here for this, this last bit, because if we're clocking data in here, that data is first going to go to this bit, and then it's going to shift its way along here until it gets to this last bit, and we want to be able to keep shifting it into the next chip. And so what we want to do is connect pin 9 of the first chip back into pin 14, which is the, the serial data input of the second chip. So if we hook pin 9 here to pin 14, that provides the input for this next chip. 
And then the clock should be the same. Actually, both clocks should be the same. So the shift register clock from the first chip is hooked to the shift register clock, the second chip, and that's the same shift register clock that's coming from the Arduino. Uh, and the same thing for the storage register clock. And so those clocks are all just hooked up the same. So now, from the Arduino, we should be able to, just with these three pins, push data out into all 16 of these outputs. So before we get too far and start hooking our EEPROM up and everything, it'd be a good idea to, to test to make sure this is actually working the way we think it is. So for that, I've got another board here with a bunch of LEDs and resistors hooked up that we can uh, hook up to the outputs of our shift registers just to see that they are in fact working. Now I've got 11 LEDs here, uh, even though there are 16 outputs, but I think that's okay because we're only going to be using uh, 11 of these outputs for the address lines because there's only 11 address lines. So I'm just going to hook these up in order. And so the outputs for these uh, 74HC595s are pins 15 and then 1 through 7. So I'll hook up to pin 15 and then pin 1 through 7. So that's 15 and 1 through 7, so that's the first, uh, the first 8. And then these last three are going to be on the second chip here. So this will go to pin 15 on the second chip, and then pins 1 and 2 on the second chip for these last two LEDs. Okay, so now if we start shifting data out of these uh, pins 2, 3, and 4, uh, we should see that data show up on these LEDs. So first I'm going to create a new sketch, and this is what, the, what we start with. And I'm going to define a couple constants here to keep track of what pins we're using. So shift data is pin 2. Shift clock is pin 3. And shift latch is pin 4. And so that's just uh, giving names to these first, uh, the, the D2, D3, and D4 pins here, uh, just so we, we remember what they are. And then in our setup, we want to make sure that all of those pins are set for output. So I'll say pin mode, shift data output, And that sets up all those pins so that they're output because we're going to be outputting to them. We're not reading the, what's coming in from them. Now to actually shift the data out on these pins, what we've got to do is we've got to set each bit on D2 and then toggle D3, which is the clock. And so put a bit on D2, toggle D3. Put the next bit on D2, toggle D3. Or, or not toggle, but pulse D3. So that's what we need to do. Now conveniently, Arduino provides a, a function that does this for us. So the shift out function here says it shifts out a byte of data one bit at a time. Starts from either the most or least significant bit. Each bit is written in turn to a data pin after which a clock pin is pulsed, taken high then low, to indicate that the bit is available. It's exactly what we want. So if we look down here, the syntax, shift out, and we give it the data pin, the clock pin, the bit order, uh, which is either MSB first or LSB first. So that's just saying, do we, are we shifting the most significant bit or the least significant bit? And that's important because we're giving it a value. We're not actually giving it the bits. We're just going to give it a number, and then it's going to convert that number to binary, and then it's just a question of what order does it put it in. So let's give this a try. Shift out, and then it's the data pin, the clock pin. So data is shift data, clock is shift clock, and then the bit order. So let's say most significant bit first, and then the value. So we can set a value of 0xff. So that's um, 255 or, or all ones. So that should shift all ones. So let's uh, compile that and hit upload. And we can see it's programming. And it hasn't done anything. It stopped blinking, so it definitely took the new program, but it hasn't output anything. And that's because we forgot to toggle our storage register. So we might very well have that data in the shift register, but we haven't pushed it through to the storage register. So we need to toggle this storage clock pulse. So let's go back over here, and we can just do that by doing a digital write for our shift latch, which is pin 4 here. And we can take that low, and then what I'll do is just 
go low, then high, and then low again. So that'll just pulse it high. So let's compile that and program it. And so now it's programming, and there we go. It pushed all ones out. Now, interestingly, you see when what we wrote here, we wrote 0xff, so that's eight bits of ones. But if we look here, we've got more than eight ones out here. And I think what happened was when we ran it the first time, it actually clocked eight ones into here, but then we didn't toggle the outputs, so we didn't see them. And then when we ran it again, it pushed, those eight ones were still here. We didn't, we never took the power off these, these uh, 74HC595s. So those ones just got pushed further onto here, and then we pushed eight more ones into here, and then we actually did the, the toggle here. Uh, and then all of those all of those things showed up on the output here. So let's try changing this and running it again. So let's change this to all zeros and upload that. And so you can see it's uploading, and boom, we get eight zeros. And then these ones were presumably <laughs> the ones that were, were over here before got all shifted along. So it looked like this is working. So if we want to shift all of these at the same time, Really what we need to do is do two lines here. And so let's say we want to do a bunch of alternating ones and zeros. So 5-5 five, five should do that, because 5-5 five, five is going to be 0, 1, 0, 1, that's 5. And then 0, 1, 0, 1 is another 5. So that's just going to be alternating ones. And so if we do that twice, that should push 16 bits of alternating ones and zeros. So let's hit Upload, and it's programming. And there's our alternating ones and zeros. So it looks like this is uh, working pretty well for us. So what I'm going to do in the code here, because we're going to use this shift register to set the address, I'm going to write a function here to actually set the address. So we'll actually copy all of this code here, we'll actually move all this code into this set address. But we want to shift out the value of this address. We don't want to shift out this, uh, you know, alternating ones and zeros. So we can say address here, and maybe here, but what, what this is going to do is that each of these shift out only shifts 8 bits at a time. That's, that's how it works. So this first thing, we need to give it not, not the whole address, we just need to give it the first 8 bits. And the way to do that is with this shift right 8 operator. So for example, if our address is, uh, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, and of course that can be represented in binary as uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. So this is the binary representation of 1, 2, 3, 4. And of course, it's more than 8 bits. Now, since we can only shift out 8 bits at a time, that's what the shift out uh, command does, this, this operator, this address greater than greater than 8, what that does is it takes this value, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it shifts all the bits to the right by, you know, 8 places. So if we shift the bits to the right one place, then we just get, you know, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and then this last zero just falls off. So it's just each bit is shifting to the right by one. If we do that eight times, then we end up just getting 1, 0, 0, because we've shifted this 1, 0, 0 all the way to the right by eight times. And so that address, shift right 8, when we say that in, in C, what that does is it takes this address, if it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and it, and it performs this shifting operations, and it leaves us with just the top bits, however many there might be. It, it basically whacks off the, the lower 8 bits. So this first shift out, if we do that address shift right 8, that'll shift out the, the, the top bits of the address. And then the second one, if we just say shift out address, it's, it's by default it's just going to ignore the top bits. So this will only shift out these lower 8 bits. So in theory, these two commands here should uh, put whatever address we've got, even if it's up to 16 bits worth of address, uh, it should put it out onto our uh, shift registers. So let's give that a try now that we've got this, this function. So we have this function called set address. So if we're down here in our setup, we can say set address 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's upload that. It's uploading. And here we go. We got something. And actually, it's it's there. It's backwards. So, one two three four is one zero zero one one zero one zero zero one zero. So, one zero zero one one zero one zero zero one zero. So that's that's perfect. So this is 
this bit here would be address line zero for the EEPROM, one, two, three, four, and so forth, and then this is the most significant bit. Uh, and that looks to be working just fine. The only other thing we need to do with our shift register is, remember, we're not just using it for the address lines, we also need to use it for the output enable line. Uh, because we, we just don't have enough other pins on the Arduino. You know, we can cover all the I.O. pins, we can do the write enable, uh, but we don't have another pin for output enable. So we need to use the shift register for that too. So for that we can use any of these uh, open outputs on our second 74HC595. So I'm just going to use the, the, the last bit here, this very top bit, and I'm going to hook that up here to another LED just so we can see what's going on there. So this is, our, this is going to be our output enable. And, and so I think if we've got our address lines and our output enable, then we can do everything else uh, directly off of the Arduino. But for our output enable, we want to shift that out at the same time that we, we shift out this, this, this byte here. It's got to be part of this first byte that we shift, uh, shift out because that's what's going to end up in this second uh, 74HT595. So to do that, I'm going to actually change my set address function here to also take a Boolean with what I want the status of output enable to be. And the way that I'm going to set this is take the, the, the top part of the address that we're already uh, outputting and do a bitwise OR with uh, another expression here, which is going to be conditional on whether output enable is true or false. So if output enable is true, then I'm going to OR it with zero, which is going to do nothing. If you OR something with zero, you get with whatever you started with. If it's not, if output enable is not true, if it's false, then I'm going to OR it with 0x80, which is if you convert hex 80 into uh, binary, it's basically just the first bit set. And so now I can use this set address function. So when I set my address 1, 2, 3, 4, I can set my output enable to true. So this, I would do this if I wanted to, let's say we want to read from address 1, 2, 3, 4. We set the address 1, 2, 3, 4, and we set output enable to, to be true. So if we go ahead and run this, See, it's uploading, and nothing happened. But that might actually be right, because when I set output enable to true, that means I want to, I want the EEPROM to output its contents. And to output its contents, this output enable is an active low. So output enable should be low, and it is low. Uh, so it might actually be working. Uh, in order to, to test that, let's, let's try setting this to false. So here we want to put the chip into uh, input, uh, the, the EEPROM into input. And let me actually give it a different address. So instead of 1234, just say 1456 or something, just so we see that something is happening. Um, and then with output enable false, we should see the output enable go high. So sending some data, and yeah, our output changes, and we get this output enable goes high. So perfect. That means we're now able to, with uh, just using three pins from our Arduino so far, uh, we're able to control all of our address lines as well as the output enable. And that means the only thing left that we need to be able to control is the I.O. pins, so there's eight of those, and the write enable. And I think everything else, uh, we can either just uh, chip enable, we can just tie low, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And fortunately, we still have nine pins left, which is exactly how many we need. So now let's start actually hooking the EEPROM up, up to this thing. So instead of just looking at LEDs, let's try to do something. Now I'll hook those same outputs here to our, uh, our address lines. So that's the first eight address lines. And we've got three more over on this side of the chip. Okay, so that's all 11 address lines hooked from our 74HT595s into the various address pins on the EEPROM. And we can also, of course, while we're here, tie the chip enable low, and that'll just always be low. We don't ever want to do anything with that. And then, of course, our EEPROM also needs ground and power. So we've got all of our address lines hooked up. We've got our Chip enable hooked up, that's just tied to ground. We've got ground and power here. Output enable, remember, we can hook that up too, because that just goes to the you know eighth output here uh, of our second shift register. Now with that, the only things left on the chip here 
are the I.O. pins, so I.O. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and our write enable. And so for those, we're just going to hook those right up to our Arduino. So the I.O. pins 0 through 7, we're just going to hook up to uh, D5, I guess is the next data pin, so D5 through D12. Okay, so that's all the I.O. lines, and the only last connection is the write enable, which is right in there, I think, and that's going to go over to pin 13. And so that should be everything. We should be able to control everything on this uh, EEPROM. So the first thing I want to do is write some code that will allow us to read what's on the EEPROM. So get this set address out of here. And I'm going to write another function here that will just let me read the uh, whatever's in a particular Byte. So the first thing we want to do is like is tell the EEPROM what address we're reading from. So we can use the set address and then the address that was passed in here. And then output enable we want to be true because we want to be able to read uh, what's coming in. So now what I want to do is read each of the data pins. So each of these uh, you know, IO0 through IO7, we want to read those. And so those are on D5 through D12. So I'm going to make some more constants here. So we'll say EEPROM D0 is on pin 5 and EEPROM D7 is on pin 12. And we can use these constants down here. So we'll do a loop. So pin is going to go from, we're actually going to go backwards from D7 down to D0. We'll decrement pin. And what I want to do is basically read each pin and shift it into uh, some byte that we're going to keep track of. So data will be the data that we're reading. And we'll start out with that equal to 0. And then for each of these pins from 7 down to 0, we'll say that data equals whatever is currently in data, shift left 1, and then add whatever is on that pin. So digital read uh, that pin. So this should build up a byte by reading one, uh, one pin at a time. And then whatever we end up with in data, we're going to return from this read EEPROM function. And so now in our setup, which is which gets run you know, when we reset the board or when we, you know, when we upload new code to it. Let's do a read EEPROM of address 0. And this is going to return a byte. So what do we do with that byte? So this is why I didn't want to use uh, these first two data pins. Because if we don't use those first two data pins, then we can use the serial on this board to actually get data out of the USB. So if we say serial begin, and then give it a speed, 57600 I think is the default, so we'll go with that. Now we can do a serial print line of whatever we read from address 0. And this will print it to the serial monitor. And so if I go to Tools, Serial Monitor, it pulls up this window, and anything that we do the serial print line will show up in this window. So let me go ahead and upload this program. And you can see it's uploading. And the board doesn't do anything. But now here we have a zero shows up. So that could mean a bunch of things. It could mean that there's actually a zero in address zero of our EEPROM, or it can mean something's not working. Uh, it's actually kind of hard to tell, unfortunately, because uh, we, we don't actually, I, well, I don't know what's programmed in this EEPROM. Uh, so I guess what we could do is we could stick it in this thing that we, we built in the last video and see, we could actually see what's in it, pry this EEPROM out of here and pop it in this circuit, and then if we power this up, go to address 0, well, there's a 0 in there, so maybe, maybe we're reading it properly. Let's see what's in address 1. Okay, address 1, there is a, a 6 in there. So let's, let's put this EEPROM back in here, and then see if when we read address 1, we get a 6. Probably shouldn't be doing this while the board is powered up, but I've had some problems where if I unplug my USB, sometimes my I have to reboot my computer for it to see the Arduino again. I'm not sure what's going on there. So so now let's go back to our code and read address 1. And hopefully we'll see that 6 in there. So I'll run that. Look at our serial monitor. And hey, there's a 6. So it looks like we're able to read the contents of the EEPROM. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some code that actually reads out a larger block of data from the EEPROM and prints it all nicely to the serial monitor. So I'm going to go from 0 to 255 by uh, increments of 16, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to print a line for every 16 bytes. 
Uh, that way it, it's formatted nicely. And so I'm gonna read 16 bytes at a time. So I'm gonna create a, an, a, an array of bytes that's 16 bytes long, and then uh, fill that array. So I'm gonna do an offset of zero to 15. Here I'm gonna put each byte into that data. Here I'm gonna read each byte from the EEPROM. Read EEPROM. Um, and I want base plus offset. And what this will do is it'll read, you know, it'll go through this loop and read all 16 of, of those bytes, uh, starting at whatever the base is. So the base will start at zero, but then it'll jump by 16. And so each time through this outer loop, we'll read 16 uh, bytes, one byte at a time through this inner loop. Then I'm gonna use uh, uh, sprintf, which is just a C function to kind of uh, create a, a formatted string. So let me create just a buffer for that string. I don't know how long that's going to be. Let's say 80 characters is probably enough. And I'm going to do sprintf into that buffer. And then here I'm just going to specify the, the format string. So I want to start out with the address that we're on. And so this percent %03 x just means that that's going to be filled in by a, uh, a three-digit hex number with leading zeros. So we'll do that. And then a bunch of two-digit hex numbers for whatever the contents at each of those bytes is. So that's eight, and since we're reading 16 at a time, we'll give 16, I'll put a little extra space in there to make it easier to read. So that'll be the uh, format string, and then we just need to specify all the things that fills in. So this first thing is gonna be our base, and then the rest of these are just our data. Okay, so that's all the data bytes that we read, so reading 16 at a time. And then, once we have that lovely string, we're going to do a serial.println of that string. And so what this should do is go through from 0 to 255, so the first you know, 255 address locations. We could go to 2048 if you wanted to read everything out of the, the chip, but we're not using that much of it. So we'll go through the first 255 addresses in, in blocks of 16, and then for each block of 16, we'll go through and read 16 bytes from the chip, and then we'll print out uh, one line with all 16 of those bytes. So let's go ahead and upload that and run that and see what shows up on our serial monitor. There's some data. I have no idea what that data is or why it uh, looks like that, but I'll take it on faith that that is what's actually in the, in the chip. So let's pop this out and actually put in the EEPROM that we used in the last video because that one I actually know what's in it. So if we put that in there, and there's a couple things we could do. We could just hit reset here, and when we reset the, the uh, Arduino, it'll rerun everything in that setup. So let me just do that. So if I push reset, then you see the serial monitor spits out some stuff. And it's a little bit confusing here because we don't, uh, we don't do anything to, to say we started over again. So you can see we, you know, are starting over at zero. So this is when I reset it, is actually starting here. And so you see the first uh, 16 bytes, there's like some stuff there, and then the rest of it is all Fs. And if you remember from the last video, the, the chip started out with all Fs, because that's what it looks like when it's you know fresh from the factory or, or it's been erased. And we programmed these first 16 bytes. So let's take a look at what we programmed in there. If you remember, this is that truth table we put together for the seven segment displays. And so in address zero, we have a one, and let's look. Address zero, yeah, here we go, here's the one. Address one, we should have one, zero, zero, one, 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 one. So what is that? This is seven bits, so remember there's another zero here. So this, this one here is gonna be four, and then this would be F. So come over here, yep, four F. Uh, and this is one, two, yep, one, two, zero, six, so zero, and then six. Yeah, so we're, we're actually, it looks like we're reading correctly the contents of this EEPROM that we programmed by hand. So that's pretty cool. So next, or really the only other thing we have to do is figure out how to write data to the EEPROM. So we'll create a, uh, a write EEPROM function, and this is gonna need an address uh, and also the data that we wanna write to that address. And so just like when we were doing the read EEPROM, we need to set the address so that we're, we're pointed at the right address. So if we do set address, address, and then here that output enable will be false because we don't want the EEPROM to be outputting because we're gonna be writing to it. We're, we were inputting data into the EEPROM. And so now we wanna take the actual data and put that out on the 
you know, D4 or D, what is it, D5 through D12 pins. So what I'll do is create a loop that just goes through all of the pins and just sets the appropriate uh, bit. We're gonna start at EEPROM D0, which remember is pin five, and then go to EEPROM uh, pin D7 and increment the pin each time. So this is gonna loop through all of our data pins. And I wanna do a digital write to each pin with the, basically the next bit of the data. So what I can do is I can take the data and if I AND it with one, that's basically going to zero out everything but the, but the last bit. So ANDing that data with one is just gonna basically pick the, the, the lowest bit. So if you have some data, you know, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, if you AND that with one, uh, remember there's all zeros here, so one and zero is zero, all these end up being zeros. And what you're left with is one and whatever this bit is. In this case, it's zero, so you end up with zero. So in this case, not very interesting, you just end up with zero. But if it were, let's say, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, and you end that with one, then again, you get all zeros for these places. So zero, 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 but then the last digit here ends up being one and one, which is one. So by ending with one, like we're doing here, so data and one, we get the least significant uh, bit and that's what we're putting out to the pin. So for the first time through the loop, no problems, right? Pin is, is D0, and we're, we're anding data with one, so we get uh, whatever's in that, in that first bit. Uh, so the next time through the loop, we want to modify, or we wanna have data modified so that we get the second bit. So what we can do is we can say data equals data shift left one. And what that'll do is it'll take the data, and so if this is what it was the first time through the loop, uh, we, we output a zero that time. The next time it'll shift it, actually we wanna shift right. Uh, let me change that, so sh data shift right one. And so if we shift this to the right one, then we get uh, a, a leading zero comes in, so we get zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, and then this zero falls off. And so we end that with one, we get a one. And then if we shift right again, so we get zero, uh, a zero comes in, and then this zero gets shifted right. So zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. I think that's the right number of bits. Yeah, that's eight bits. We end that with one, we get a zero. And so you see what we're doing is we're getting a zero, one, zero. And that corresponds to the original zero, one, zero. So each time through the loop, we shift everything to the right, and we look at that rightmost bit, or we, we output that rightmost bit to the pin, and then the pin is getting incremented each time through the loop as well. So this should have the effect of getting our entire uh, byte output onto our, our, our eight uh, uh, data pins. Okay, so we've set our address and we've set our data. So we've got the address getting output here to all of our address bits. We've got our data being uh, output correctly on all of these yellow uh, data uh, pins. So now what do we need to do? We need to, oh, and we also have our output enable set properly because that's uh, set as part of our set address here. So the only other thing we need to do is pulse that write enable pin. If you remember in our original, uh, we had this button that we push and we had this uh, little pulse uh, generator thing that would generate a, a 600 and whatever nanosecond pulse. So we need to do something similar now with our write enable pin here, which is uh, connected to D13. So I'm gonna create a, another uh, constant here for write enable, and that's connected to pin D13, pin 13. And so when we do our write, once we set our address and our output enable, and we set our data, we need to pulse that write enable. So digital write to write enable pin, and we wanna pulse it low, because it's a, an active low kind of thing, and then go back high again. And this is where that timing is important, and unfortunately, the best we can do with Arduino is this delay microseconds. I mean, unless we get into the Atmel uh, assembly, but with, with just what Arduino gives us, we can do this delay microseconds one. And, you know, it's not gonna be perfect. So we look at our data sheet, remember that right pulse width has a maximum of 1,000 nanoseconds, and one microsecond is 1,000 nanoseconds. So we're, we're right at that maximum, but of course this digital write is gonna take a little bit of time. So we'll be a little bit over um, but I don't think that's a huge deal. Uh, I, I think if, if anything, the only negative effect it, it would have is around the endurance, just sort of the, the longevity of the, of the chip. Uh, but it, it already, 
you know, is, is capable of 10,000 or 100,000 uh, write cycles. So, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but of course, we do want to make sure that our write enable pin starts out high. So uh, in our setup, I'm going to set that write enable pin high. And of course, we also want the pin mode to be set. So write enable, we'll set that to output. And actually, this is a good order to do things in. You know, it might seem kind of strange to do the write before we set the pin to actually output. But what a, what a digital write does when a pin is input is it just sets a pull-up resistor. So or if you set it high, it'll set a pull-up resistor on that pin. And then when we set the, uh, the pin mode to output, it'll already be high. So, so this is the right order to do this in to, to be safe uh, because we, we don't, you know, we'd like to avoid that write enable pin accidentally going low because when it goes low, that means the chip is potentially writing data somewhere. And we don't want it to do that unless we, unless we tell it to. Otherwise, we might lose data that, that we want to keep in there. So uh, this, is, this is probably the safest way to, 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 to do that. So this should take care of writing our EEPROM. Yeah, we set our address, we set our data, and then we pulse our write enable pin. Uh, we should add another delay in here. Uh, so we can wait for five milliseconds. It's just kind of a, a good thing to do uh, before we you know, go changing our address or changing our data to something else to give the, the EEPROM a chance to, to actually get the data written. And then I guess, oh, the other thing we need to do is make sure, since we're doing a write to our data pins here, we want to make sure our data pins are, in, uh, are set for output. Because if we're writing to the EEPROM, we want our data pins to be output. If we're reading from the EEPROM, we want our data pins to be input. So let's do that. So that's going to be a pin mode, EEPROM D0 output, or, well, actually input if we're right. Uh, no, output, yeah, output from the, output from the Arduino, <laughs> uh, which is going to be input into the, into the, into the EEPROM. Um, but we actually want to, we, we don't, we want to set all of the output. So let's do a loop here. And then we'll set the pin mode in the loop here, and it'll just be pin. So well, that'll set all eight of them to output when we want to write. And then when we want to read, we'll set them all to input. Okay, let's take a look again. So this is our write function. So we're going to take an address and a byte of data. We're going to set all of our data pins to output. And we're going to set our address so that the EEPROM is pointed to the right address. We're going to set output enable false when we set that address so that the EEPROM is not outputting, which means we're going to be inputting to it. And then we loop through each of the bits and write each bit of data to that bit. And then we pulse our write enable low for one microsecond. And then we wait five milliseconds to, uh, to let it uh, complete the write cycle. So that, I think, should do it. Okay, so let's try. I'm gonna actually keep, if we go into our setup here, so, yeah, there's, there's actually some setup here, and then this for loop is dumping the contents. So maybe, maybe I'll pull this for loop out into another function. So I'll create another function here, print contents, and that'll just print that contents of the EEPROM, which is all this stuff that we did last time. So I'll move that up into here, print contents. And then in my setup, we have all our pin mode stuff. Yep, this is all good setup stuff, serial. So that's all set up. So now we can do, if we just want to read from the chip in our setup, we can just do print contents, and that'll do what we did before. If we want to write something, then we can say write EEPROM and give it an address, let's say address zero, and give it some data. So let's say we want to write 42 as a good number. And then we do print contents. We should see the contents the same as they were before, except for address location zero should have a 42 in it. So let's compile and see. Oh, it looks like it actually compiled. <laughs> a little bit surprising. Um, uh, let's go ahead and, and upload it, see what happens. And I'll pull up my serial monitor here, and you can see it's uploading. And okay, so it looks like we've got 81, 81, 81. So somehow it looks like it overwrote the first, it wrote something to the first two bytes, but not what I wanted, because I want to write 42, which is going to be. 2a hex is what we should expect to see there. 
So that's not 2A. Let's see. Let's let's look at some other things here. So 42 in binary is 101010. That's convenient. And what's 81 hex? Because that's what's actually there. We go to binary. Oh, that's a very different looking thing. So why is that 81 there? So I'm going to try writing a zero and see what that does, if anything. Whoa, what is happening? So somehow it's affecting the first two bytes. So I just pulled the uh, chip out and stuck it in here, and you can see address zero in fact has all zeros, which is what we put there. And if I go to address one, I see what we had in there before. In fact, you can see it, it shows the one. So we never did overwrite address one. So something funky is going on. The write is actually working. It seems to be the read is lying to us. So that's very strange. And let's just try writing something else. Let's try writing a, oh, I don't know, 0x55, that's a cool pattern. And then we'll print the contents. So upload that, see our output. So yeah, again, the output for those first two is wrong. But let's pull it out and let's see what's actually in the chip. So let's pop it into this circuit. And yeah, that is definitely 5.5 five in address 0. And then address 1, still unchanged. So we're actually writing it correctly. We're just reading it wrong, which is very strange because we were reading it correctly before. So. This is just a wild guess, but maybe, maybe, maybe we are not waiting long enough when we do this right. So I did add this delay in here. Let's just make that 10. It really shouldn't need to be that long. What does the data sheet say? Yeah, it definitely doesn't need to be that long. So this is saying write cycle time, and they give you a different time for the 28C16 and the 28C16E, and we have, I don't see an E there, so I guess we have the, I guess we have the slow one. So max, one millisecond. So delay, pauses the program for amount of time in milliseconds. A thousand milliseconds in a second. So delay of one should be enough to let it do this right cycle. I don't know. Let's Let's try 10. So that's programming. And huh, look at that. 55 and then the rest of our data is correct. Well, I guess we just needed a longer delay there. I'm not sure why it needs to be 10 times what it should, but uh, it seems to maybe be working. Let's say we want to write more than just one byte. Let's see if that works. So for int address equals zero. So let's just say we want to write to every address from zero to 255. I don't know, let's put all zeros in there. Why not? Let's see if that works. Yep, oh, okay, all zeros. And let's just test that because I don't tr <laughs> fully trust this yet. Pop this out, pop it back into here. So that's zero, zeros. Yeah, it seems like, I don't know, I'm just flipping these switches kind of randomly. And I'm seeing zeros, but if I go, you know, we only did the first two, 256 locations, so if we uh, go beyond the first eight bits of address, then we get into the part of the chip that we haven't written, and those are still all ones. So it looks like we're able to write whatever we want. So you may recall in a previous video, we had this whole truth table that we'd come up with in order to do our seven segment display. So now if we convert this truth table to hexadecimal, so I'm just gonna go through and convert all of these to hexadecimal by hand, which is not super fun, but more fun than programming the EEPROM by hand. Okay, so I've converted all of these to hex, and now let me go ahead and type them in over here. Okay, so that is the uh, hexadecimal representations of each of the bytes in this truth table for our seven-segment display decoder. And so now those are 
very conveniently typed into a computer thing here, and we can hopefully use this to program our EEPROM. So this here, actually what I'll do is I'll just change this to FF. So this loop here will just erase the whole thing. Actually, I can erase the whole thing. 2048 is the whole thing. And then address equals zero to, we've got 16 bytes that we're programming. 2047. Make sure I get this, my loops right here. And I want to write EEPROM address and then data of address. And so that what that'll do is it'll go from address zero through 15 and it will write to that address. So for example, address zero, it'll write the data element zero in this data array. So it'll write this to address zero, address one, address two, and so forth. So it'll basically just write this data to our EEPROM. Um, so this will erase entire EEPROM. I don't know, erase the entire EEPROM and then program 16 bytes. And then when that's done, we print the contents. So well, let's give it a whirl. And it wants a semicolon. Hopefully, oh, there it goes. Yep, okay, cool. And here is our data. And that should match uh, what I typed here. Let's just scroll up. So yeah, it looks like that roughly matches what I typed there. So cool, we programmed all that. And that was much less painful than uh, fiddling around with all the wires like we were doing before. So let's see if it actually worked. Let's pop this EEPROM out and put it into this circuit from last video and flip through and it looks like indeed it seems like it's uh, roughly working. And so hopefully that makes sense how you could come in here and modify this code. You could make certainly make data longer than 16. If you had a whole bunch of data you wanted to write to the EEPROM, you could just put it all in there. And of course this loop here to program 16 bytes, you'd need to go from zero to whatever uh, you, you had there for your data. Uh, but this uh, seems like it's working pretty well. And of course, when I'm doing this print contents, you know, I'm only printing the first 255 bytes. If you wanted to print more, uh, again, you could come up here and just change this uh, base, you know, this this maximum uh, value here. But uh, I'll uh, upload this code and uh, put put links to it in the description for the video. So feel free to to look at it a little bit more closely. So hopefully you found that interesting. It's certainly uh, a much easier way to, to program these EEPROMs. And so we'll be uh, using this programmer in future videos as we continue to build our computer.